Mrs. Atwin, seconded by Ms. Kayabaga, moves that Bill S-219, an act respecting a National Ribbon Skirt Day, be now read a second time and referred to the Standing Committee on Indigenous and Northern Affairs. Debate. The Honourable Member for Fredericton. Thank you, Madam Speaker. First, I want to acknowledge that I'm addressing you from the unceded territory of the Anishinaabe people. At the core beliefs of the Anishinaabe is the notion of respect. Each element is part of the cycle of life. Each has its purpose and deserves as much respect. Our relationships are what matters the most, and we should cherish them. I am also conscious that we have people joining us from across Turtle Island who are located on both treaty and unceded lands of Canada's Indigenous peoples. In the riding I represent of Fredericton or Ekbahug, we are on unceded Willistoquay territory where the beautiful and bountiful river flows through our communities and reminds us of our collective responsibility to each other and the land. Today, I have the incredible honor of sponsoring Senate Bill 219, an act to establish National Ribbon Skirt Day for January 4th in Canada. This bill comes to this place from the work of Senator Mary Jane McCollum and the inspiration of Isabella Kulak. Dr. Mary Jane McCollum is a First Nations woman of Cree heritage from Broquette, Manitoba, and an advocate for social justice. Before arriving in the Senate of Canada, she spent much of her career in the dental field, focused on education and on the health of Indigenous communities. Throughout her career, she has worked tirelessly to provide dental and health services to a variety of Northern First Nations and Indigenous communities, especially by managing youth and health programs in her home community. Senator McCollum also raises awareness and understanding of the experiences of Indigenous peoples by sharing her personal experience as a residential school survivor. I tell you all of this because the Senator's passion for advancing the health and prosperity of Indigenous communities is reflected in this important piece of legislation. We have the opportunity to vote on this bill because of Senator McCollum's unwavering commitment to real reconciliation between Canada and Indigenous communities across Turtle Island. Madam Speaker, what I'm seeking to impart on my colleagues today is the fundamental importance of celebrating Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirited peoples, the importance of championing their resiliency, their diversity, and their power on their terms. That is the spirit behind ribbon skirts. They are a strong symbol. They are beautiful, and they carry teachings and stories. They also represent cultural and spiritual protection, like armor. Where I'm from, Madam Speaker, there is a not-so-new tradition of Willistook Wednesdays, started by school staff, Indigenous organizations, and communities across the territory. Today, people of all ages show their pride in culture and identity. I am also a member of a national Facebook group called Ribbon Skirts Every Day, where an online community has been built. I urge all members of this House to explore their own riding's resurgence of ribbon skirt makers and wearers. There are exciting entrepreneurial activities around the growing practice of ribbon skirt making as Indigenous women stock up for every occasion. Mother-daughter sets, traditional wedding dresses, regalia. Ribbon skirts' meanings vary from person to person, from personal to traditional designs, from ceremonial to casual. Ribbon skirts are a beautiful manifestation of strength found in the feminine spirit. Colors are chosen with intention, and intricate applique designs can represent family clans, sisterhoods, wampum history, traditional names. Each one is unique and made with love and positive thoughts. They are also often made for statements and disseminating truth. With dedications to missing and murdered Indigenous women or for bringing awareness for the children and families who experience residential schools. There were times in our history where ribbon skirts would have been banned, seen as outside the norm, shamed, when the potlatch ban in Canada started in 1885, ribbon skirts along with ceremonial items were outlawed by the government. Sadly, this history sometimes rears its ugly head. Two years ago, 10-year-old Isabella Kulak from Cote First Nation took a stand in her ribbon skirt against her Saskatchewan elementary school. In December of that year, she was shamed for wearing a ribbon skirt instead of the store-bought dresses the other girls were wearing for a formal day. Her parents shared the story on social media, and soon after, she became the catalyst of a movement. Indigenous women from all over the world began showing their support by donning their ribbon skirts in solidarity. Let me share Isabella's story with you, in her own words, through a letter that she wrote to Senator McCallum that was read into the record. My name is Isabella Suzanne Kulak, and I would like to start off by telling you what the ribbon skirt means to me. The ribbon skirt represents strength, resiliency, cultural identity, and womanhood. When I wear my ribbon skirt, I feel confident and proud to be a young Indigenous girl. When I was eight years old, I was gifted my very own ribbon skirt from my auntie, Farah Sanderson. I wore it with pride and honour to my traditional ceremonies and powwows. 
On December 18th, 2020, it was a formal day at Kamzak Comprehensive Institute where I attended school. So I chose to wear my ribbon skirt, just like my older sister, Jerry. When I got to school, a teacher assistant commented on it and said it didn't even match my shirt and maybe next formal day, I should wear something else like another girl was wearing and pointed at her. Those words made me feel pressured to be someone I am not. I eventually took off my skirt as I felt shamed. Today, I no longer feel shamed and I feel proud and powerful enough to move mountains because I know that people from around the world are standing with me. I am very grateful to be Canadian, to be Indian, and to represent my people by wearing my ribbon skirt proudly. Thank you to Senator McCallum and to all people who supported me from around the world, from Canada and from all First Nations across the nations of Earth. Sincerely, Isabella. Isabella, I want you to know how strong and amazing you are for not only finding the strength to stand up to discrimination, but for turning your experience into empowerment for other young girls and women. I have two beautiful Willustaquay nieces, Haley and Olivia, who love ribbon skirts, and because of your efforts, they can wear them with their heads held high, knowing they are not alone and that their ancestors are proud. I can't help but think of the children from residential institutions, of Phyllis Jack Webstadt and her orange shirt. There is a saying that bears repeating. They tried to bury them, but didn't know they were seeds. In so many ways, Indigenous youth in particular are changing history. They are shaking off colonial expectations and imposed practices and beliefs, and they are redefining who they are and how the world sees them. It is moving, to say the least, and I'm so excited to see the Canada that they create for us all. We know there are still challenges in Canada today that require our attention, bridges that still need building, and we need to try every avenue to support Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirited peoples, including through expression, art, and social enterprise. What we learned from the story of Isabella Kulak is that not everyone has learned the true history of our relationship, or the significance of respecting the first peoples of this land, or even that they're still here. As a former educator, I know that education is the antithesis of ignorance. Anti-racism is rooted in education, and it has real, tangible results. Keep learning, Canada. Keep listening. Keep opening your heart and your mind to new understandings, even if they make you uncomfortable. This learning is not about guilt, it's about action. Madam Speaker, let me take this opportunity to remind this House of the findings of the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples, of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's report and 94 recommendations, of the inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, and more locally in each of our provinces and territories, child and youth advocate findings on Indigenous child welfare. There are still serious gaps and key outcomes that we can close with concerted effort, investment, and education. There have been dark times, but I am optimistic, more so than ever, that the tides have turned. There is political will, there is cooperation, there is hope. Madam Speaker, ribbon skirts may not seem like revolutionary tools, but I believe they are. Today's ribbon skirts are as much about modern Indigenous culture as they are about tradition. As the world has moved forward and evolved, so too have the diverse Indigenous nations across the country. Today we see so many living up to the words of Lee Miracle, find freedom in the context you inherit. Ribbon skirts represent freedom, living out loud, being proud of who you are. These are realities we can all get behind. In Canada, the first step to knowing ourselves and our communities is knowing where our traditions come from and how we relate to others through those traditions. Kaya Heitland, a Métis woman who belongs to the Couch and Valley Métis community, started the project Indigenous Nouveau to facilitate a greater visibility for her community and the Métis to showcase the unique beadwork, quillwork patterns, arts, culture, and history. She's describing the history of ribbon skirts as follows. The history of the ribbon skirt comes down to us through many cross-cultural interactions, and so many different interpretations and expressions exist. Many First Nations and Indigenous groups across Turtle Island have a strong tradition in this iconic piece of clothing and all have their own stories and protocols surrounding them. What we know today as the modern ribbon skirt is a collaboration. Ribbon skirts are a symbol of resilience, survival, and identity, but their meaning changes with each person who wears one and each person who shares their story. For Indigenous peoples, the ribbon skirt represents personal reclamation. It represents reclaiming identity and wearing the identi that identity proudly. It is a cultural protection against assimilation and degradation. It is a reminder of the various roles of the community as women and as members. It reminds us of the sacredness of women and the power in that. It tells the story of adaptation and survival. Madam Speaker, women have always been the ones who nurture us through difficult times. 
through bad dreams and storms. Women are the ones revitalizing the language and culture through education, resuming child and family jurisdiction, winning legal battles. Women like Cindy Blackstock, Patricia Bernard, Lisa Pearly Dutcher. Women are the ones leading us through decolonization and reparation. They are who I want to honor today. And they are who this bill lifts up and seeks to celebrate by encouraging understanding and collective action. On November 30th, 2021, Senator McCollum delivered a powerful speech in the Senate regarding Bill S-219. In it, she thanked Chief George Cote of the Cote First Nation in Saskatchewan, as well as Isabella and her family. She read a letter written to her by the chief describing what the bill means to the community. On behalf of Cote First Nation, we are honored to have January 4th as National Ribbon Skirt Day across our great nation. Bella Kulak has demonstrated the importance of sharing our culture to other nations. Our First Nations Métis Inuit women are a symbol of life givers, and their resilience in looking after their home fires is the strength in moving forward. We thank Senator McCollum for bringing forward such a recognition and encourage all parliamentarians to offer their support for this bill in the Year of Truth and Reconciliation. Miigwech from the Salto First Nations of Treaty 4 Territory. And in the words of Senator McCollum, this bill aims to provide social justice for Bella and other young Indigenous youth who must struggle against racism, colonialism, and gender violence in their day-to-day -day lives. By keeping this request for a National Day of Recognition situated within a framework generated from and led by the Cote Reserve, it ensures that the families and communities' tradition and intergenerational knowledge is secure while they're navigating modern Indigenous struggles. This also helps to resist the colonial images of Indigenous women, girls, and transgender peoples. She goes on to say that acts of resistance inform the Indigenous struggle for self-determination. Although Bella might have been unaware of her activism, she had already committed to actions that were anti-colonial and focused on the goals of transformation and liberation, free to express her cultural heritage and make people worldwide aware that she's helping to trans transform the colonial picture of Indigenous youth. Her act of resistance and education is medicine for her and other youth and allows them to practice from a safe space. Miigwech, Senator McCollum. Isabella's parents also wrote to Senator McCollum to express what this bill and the discussion around it means to them. They said, our hope in all of this is that all Canadians see the relevance of what has occur occurred and that this forever defines what is truly unacceptable in our public institutions and our society as a whole. We as a family feel a great sense of responsibility to all Canadians, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous, to create a safe space and a dialogue that will continue on in a mutual respect between nations that last for generations. The creation and discussion around Bill S-219 has brought hope that these discussions lead to a greater sense of pride for our country's Indigenous peoples, and foremost, a greater sense of urgency as it pertains to the reconciliation process and the decolonization of Canada. It should come as no surprise that Christopher and Lana Kulak refer to their daughter Bella as Bella the Brave. Madam Speaker, to all the children out there like Isabella who might have ever been made to feel less than or unappreciated, I want them to feel respected, seen, and loved by Canada. On January 4th or any other day of the year, for ribbon skirts to be recognized and acknowledged for the symbol of power that they are. This bill will give us an opportunity to celebrate and stand with ind Indigenous women, girls, and gender diverse peoples and their beautiful ribbon skirts. Every child deserves joy. Every child matters. I invite you all to support Isabella and all the little ones with this initiative so we encourage them to grow up and be their true self, happy and proud of who they are. We still have a lot of work to do, Madam Speaker, to fight against these injustices and the many impacts of our systems that were built on racism and bias. But today, honorable colleagues, I invite you to take another meaningful step towards building a future where all nations across Canada are celebrated. Thank you, Merci, Wiliwin, Jimmy Gwedge. Questions and comments, uh, the Honourable Member for Yorkton Melville. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker, and thank you for the wonderful presentation today. Uh, this particular uh, First Nation Cote is in my riding, and it means a great deal uh, to be able to support this today. Isabella is a beautiful young woman and her parents are amazing. As a matter of fact, uh, Chief George and I have talked often about uh, the things that they are doing uh, there within their First Nation and the work that is moving forward to make uh, their place a place that is welcoming and safe 
and uh, I really respect the work that they're doing even with tiny homes, a number of them working together to build those particular uh, opportunities to build something that gives them a chance to see that I could become, oh, I'd rather be a plumber or an electrician or whatever. They're, they're engaged significantly. And uh, I want to say that Yorkton Tribal Council with Chief Osoup and with Chief George and, and those involved in the riding, what I hear over and over again is we are excited to work together to see us move forward with reconciliation and the efforts that went into dealing with the circumstances around what Isabella faced were significant. And so I'm excited today to say well done Isabella and we look forward to uh, this particular bill going forward. The Honourable Member for Fredericton. Oh, thank you Madam Speaker and thank you so much to the member opposite for that wonderful intervention. Um, it's, it's amazing you know, to make those personal connections in each of our ridings across this country. Um, and I think it speaks to the work of reconciliation. It's, it's complicated, um, it's, it's far reaching, it's gonna take more than the federal government, the, our provincial and territorial governments, it's gonna take every one of us to do the work that needs to be done um, on an individual basis. And that's what I, I wanted to address as well, is that responsibility. Um, and sometimes when we hear these, these stories, um, you know, it's painful stories of, of a little girl being ashamed to, to be who she is. Um, we do feel that guilt sometimes. Um, but again, I want to impress upon my colleagues that it's, it's about action. Turn that feeling into action and know that you have that agency, you have that will to, to make a difference in your home communities. Um, so it, it's, again, thank you so much for that wonderful comment. Questions et commentaires, l'honorable député de Shefford. Thank you, Madam President. I remercie my colleague for his discourse, for for en fait cette fameuse journée nationale de la jupe à ruban. Mais j'espère que cette journée sera d'abord et avant tout un moment de réflexion, mais pour nous amener à passer à l'action. Elle a parlé du rapport sur les femmes et les filles autochtones disparues et assassinées. Et j'espère que cette journée-là nous permettra de réfléchir sur ce qui sera important de mettre en place pour aider la... et honorer ces femmes. Bravo, bonne question. The Honourable Member for Fredericton. L'Honourable Député de Fredericton. Uh, merci, Madame la Présidente, et merci à mon collègue. Um, you know, missing and murdered Indigenous women is another example of our very complicated history, of the multifaceted nature of reconciliation. And that's why I feel this bill is so important, because it holds up Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirited peoples in such a positive way. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's about celebration. Uh, and in that, it has its own role in addressing the issue of missing and murdered Indigenous women. And I, I have been a bit frustrated by the pace um, that we're taking as far as addressing these injustices. But again, it goes back to our individual writings. Um, I've seen incredible support by local communities. Uh, Fredericton also had an incredible funding opportunity with our, our local Friendship Centre. Um, Manuguena Ouijig is, is going to be a new space for women to feel safe, uh, to receive programming on intimate partner violence. Um, there's also so social enterprise there. There'll be housing options. So again, it's, it, we're going to see these, these types of projects that are going to have far-reaching impacts that will also help to deal with missing and murdered Indigenous women. But I want to see that task force uh, get to the, the real work as well. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Nunavut. I wanted to thank the member for uh, her intervention and for uh, sponsoring this bill. Uh, at, at and I have every respect for it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it excludes uh, Inuit cultural practices in this bill, and I wondered if the member would be willing to uh, see amendments to make sure that all uh, Indigenous cultural practices are, re are reflected in this bill. Queen the milk. The Honourable Member for Fredericton. Madam Speaker, I thank the Honourable Colleague from Nunavut. I enjoy so much working with you on the Indigenous Northern Affairs Committee. Um, I mean, I think representation is critical. I think it's also important to recognize the diversity that exists across the nation. There's often a pan-indigenizing that happens with a lot of legislation that comes through this house. Um, I would certainly be open to, to having those discussions and ensuring that it's, it's adequately representing Inuit community and culture as well. Um, so it's certainly something we'll, we'll, we'll look to when it comes to committee. Thank you.